Welcome to Full Frontal. I'm Samantha B. First of all, I want to congratulate former Full Frontal writer and friend of the show, Trayvon Free, on winning an Oscar for his short film, Two Distant Strangers. And I also want to congratulate one of my favorite actors of all time, Frances McDormand, for winning Best Actress for her role in Nomadland. It was a brave, powerful, nuanced performance. Also, she shits in a bucket. And hey, if shitting in a bucket leads to winning an Academy Award, I should have like three Oscars already. Anyway, speaking of three shits in a bucket, here's Tom Cotton, Ted Cruz, and Tucker Carlson. The border right now is wide open because the Biden administration dismantled the very effective policies of the Trump administration. All of us today witnessed the Biden cages. This is inhumane. It is wrong. It is a crisis. It is a crisis that was created by the Biden administration, by their own policies. Huge numbers, large numbers of illegal immigrants with coronavirus have come across our border illegally. Meanwhile, you have to stay huddled in your home with an obedience mask on. Tucker Carlson knows he doesn't need to wear a mask at home, right? Like if someone in his house is telling him to put on a mask, it's because they hate looking at his shitty, stupid, confused face. When Republicans use rhetoric like the border crisis, they're just whipping their base into a racist feargasm by pretending that the people who seek asylum are somehow a threat to our country. The only threat to our country is Ted Cruz acting like he cares about kids when mostly he just uses them as a scapegoat when he skips town during an actual crisis. Republicans using inflammatory language distracts from the real crisis, how migrants are being treated. The truth is, the Biden administration should face criticism for its handling of the border, not for the xenophobic lies Republicans are spreading, but for its continuation of some Trump policies and for walking back promises made on immigration. The Biden administration is poised to break a major promise to increase the number of refugee admissions to 62,000, calling it unlikely, instead signing an emergency presidential determination that keeps the cap at 15,000, which was President Trump's historic low number. How in the world is Biden on track to admit fewer refugees than the Trump administration? He got rid of Trump's Diet Coke button on day one. Immigration should be at least as much of a priority. After receiving blistering criticism from allies on the left, Biden reversed course. But the administration is still unlikely to accept the number of refugees he initially promised. During his campaign, the president pledged to secure our values as a nation of immigrants. So why has their administration's immigration response been so hesitant? This month, Biden blamed his delayed action on the growing number of migrants arriving at the U.S.-Mexico border. So secure our values as a nation of immigrants, but whoa, that's a lot of people, not that many, hold on. It's true that March was the busiest month at the border in nearly two decades, with migrant encounters up 71%. Border agents took more than 170,000 migrants into custody, and many of them were families. But the reports you see on Fox are exaggerated. A lot of reporting about the southern border has sort of used terms like a surge or a crisis, and the data don't really reflect that. When winter ends and the weather begins to warm, we see an increase of undocumented immigration at the southern border, which leads to increases in apprehensions by Customs and Border Protection. Border crossings are cyclical, and right now there is a cyclical increase. Many migrants are arriving from Guatemala, Honduras, and El Salvador, Central American countries they've left to escape poverty, gang violence, and corruption. And there are new reasons for the uptick in migration as well. For one, many migrants are here because the pandemic devastated their communities. For another, climate change. Last year, a series of deadly hurricanes swept through Central America, destroying crops and homes and leaving an estimated 9 million people displaced. The Biden administration has moved away from Trump-era policy by choosing not to expel children at the border because doing so would put them in greater danger. But the number of unaccompanied minors arriving at the border has risen sharply, and the administration seems wholly unprepared to take care of them. 
A young boy approaching a U.S. Border Patrol agent last Thursday in the middle of the desert, alone and sobbing. Can you help me, he says. They left you alone, the agent asks. They abandoned me, he says, adding his parents were not with him and he was afraid of being kidnapped. There are currently more than 19,000 unaccompanied migrant children in U.S. custody, more than 4,000 held by the Border Patrol in severely overcrowded detention facilities like this one in Donna, Texas where they are packed shoulder to shoulder in a pandemic. That is disturbing and disgusting, and it should not be happening under any administration, let alone one that promised compassion. The number of unaccompanied minors has reached an all-time high. Biden's positions on immigration may stand in direct opposition to Trump's zero-tolerance immigration policy, which cruelly separated families and placed children in cages. But the images from today look inexcusably like the ones from back then. Under the law, the federal government has three days to move unaccompanied children from adult border control facilities, which have been criticized for exposing children to disease, hunger, and overcrowding, into shelters maintained by the Department of Health and Human Services. But as of March, more than 42% of children in custody at the border were held longer than the three-day maximum. The Biden administration has now released its first images from inside two Texas detention centers. Many of the facilities are now home to a record number of migrant children who are being held well past the 72-hour maximum for unaccompanied kids. The, these Border Patrol facilities are not places made for children. A wave of asylum seekers seen huddled in close quarters, some sleeping on floors and under foil blankets. Several of the border stations are overcrowded and overwhelmed. Furthermore, once children are transferred to HHS shelters, they spend an average of 31 days in custody before they're released. Right now, in 2021, under a Democratic administration, children who are alone, vulnerable, and terrified are being held in government custody for a month. Americans should care that kids are being held in custody for that long. We've held convicted white-collar criminals for less than a month. Hell! They let Felicity Huffman out of prison after 11 days. And why? It's not like she's going to win an Oscar now. She hasn't even shit in a bucket. Aw, thanks for watching. If you'd like to hear more from Full Frontal, hit subscribe and visit our page for more videos. Or if you'd like to be radicalized, leave YouTube on autoplay.